While you have been on school holidays, farmers have been very busy harvesting their crops. This is wheat being harvested by a combined harvester. Well, what the combine actually does, it cuts the crop off near the floor and takes in the cut part of the crop. And then the ears of the cereals, like this ears of wheat, or the pods of oilseed rape, are then threshed. Which basically means that it's squashed and crushed like that to get the grains out of the ears. The calf and other bits that come out are then separated by being blown off and you end up with the grain which goes into the combine tank and the rest of the crop which goes out of the back of the combine as straw. The grain is stored in the combine harvester's grain tank. And the straw comes out of the back. The combine grain tank is emptied into trailers which take the grain back to the farm. These wheat grains will be stored until needed for animal feed or to make flour. This is a baler. It picks up the rows of straw and compacts it into round bales. The wheat straw is baled to use for animal feed or bedding. The bales must be kept dry to be of real use as animal feed or bedding. So the bale straw is led from the field and stored. usually in barns or outside in large stacks. If stored in stacks outside, only the top layers will get wet and spoil. Here's some more crops being harvested. Barley for beer or animal feed. Oil seed rape which is crushed for oil, which is usually used for cooking. Peas, which are usually frozen within 150 minutes of harvest.
so when the weather is dry, farmers work very long hours. You may have seen them working long into the night. These cheeky sparrows have enjoyed the harvest too. Lots of other wildlife can be seen at harvest too. In the following programmes we will look at how these crops get from the farm to your plate. The farmer's livestock have been harvested in two, grass in this case. As well as enjoying the sun, lambs and calves have been learning to eat grass. The mothers have been harvesting the grass to make milk, which their young have also been enjoying. Once the farmer is happy they are eating enough grass, then they will be weaned. This is to allow their mother time to recover, so she can have another lamb or calf next spring. These lambs were weaned a week ago. Now they are being rounded up to be sorted and moved to new grass. All safely in the pen now. The lambs are given a dose of medicine to stop them getting worms or flukes in their intestines. <laughs> worms and flukes can make the lambs very ill or even die so it is important that they are protected against them. Just like you get protection against some diseases when you have vaccinations. The lambs are loaded onto a trailer to take them to their new field. Here are the lambs in their new field a few days later. We will come back and see how they have grown in a few weeks. Bees and other insects are also busy with their harvest. Bees harvest pollen and nectar produced by flowers. Bees suck nectar up through their proboscis. They use it for energy and to produce honey. As bees visit flowers, they collect pollen. Some pollen and nectar is taken back to the beehive. Some of the pollen is transferred on their bodies between plants. We call this pollination. Bees are important to pollinate many food crops such as these. Beans, linseed, 
Hood seed rip. Peas. Without bees, the farmer would not have seeds and fruits to harvest. Once the farmer has harvested his crops, the bees have to rely on wildflowers and garden flowers for their food. so they can survive until they hibernate for winter. You can help the beasts survive and boost biodiversity by growing flowers or just allow existing plants to flower by not cutting them. Like these flowers which you may already see growing on your school field. 